Practice test four. Listening test. In the listening test, you will be asked to demonstrate how well you understand spoken English. The entire listening section of the test will last approximately 45 minutes. Directions are given for each of the four parts. There is a separate answer sheet for marking answers. Do not write your answers in the test book. Part one. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear four statements about each picture in your textbook. After listening to all four statements, you must select the one statement that best describes what you see in the picture. Then find the number of that question on your answer sheet and mark your answer. The statements will be spoken only one time and are not printed in your test book. Look at the sample below. Now listen to the four statements. A. The woman is using a musical instrument. B. The woman is typing on a computer. C. The woman is playing a video game. D. The woman is standing behind the table. Statement B. The woman is typing on a computer. Best describes what you see in the picture. Therefore, you should choose answer B. Now let us begin part one with question number one. Number one. Look at the picture marked number one in your test book. A. There are vases of flowers on the tables. B. The people are holding a discussion. C. The room has been set up for a conference. D. A conference is taking place. Number two. Look at the picture marked number two in your test book. A. The man is painting a door. B. The man has been painting the door. C. The door has been painted by the man. D. The door is open. Go on to the next page. Number three. Look at the picture marked number three in your test book. A. The workbench is empty. B. There are tools on the workbench. C. The man is using the workbench. D. The carpenter has made a chair. Number four. Look at the picture marked number four in your test book. A. The two women are angry with each other. B. The two women look happy. C. The two women are depressed about work. D. The two women are writing a report. Number five. Look at the picture marked number five in your test book. A. The cars are at a gas station. B. The cars are leaving the gas station. C. The man is filling his car with gas. D. The man is leaning on the gas pump. Number six. Look at the picture marked number six in your test book. A. The woman is using a laptop computer. B. The woman is suffering. C. The woman is surfing the internet. D. The woman is surfing. Go on to the next page. Number seven. Look at the picture marked number seven in your test book. A. The paper is stacked across from the table. B. The woman is putting paper under the table. C. The people are arranging papers on a table. D. The paper is hanging over the tables. Number eight. Look at the picture marked number eight in your test book. A. The women are discussing a document. B. The women are resuming a discussion. C. The women are walking in an office. D. The women are walking in the corridor. Number nine. Look at the picture marked number nine in your test book. A. The man and woman are conducting a survey. B. The man and woman are surveying the view.
C. The man and woman are watching the view. D. The woman is pointing out a new building. Number 10. Look at the picture marked number 10 in your test book. A. The woman is seated on the right of one of the men. B. The woman is seated between the two men. C. The man is seated between two women. D. The woman is standing by the window. Go on to the next page. Part 2. Directions. In this section, you will hear a question or statement followed by three responses. Select the best response to the question or statement and mark the letter A, B, or C on your answer sheet. Again, each response will be spoken only one time and will not be printed in your test book. Look at the sample below. You will hear, How are you today? You will also hear, A. I'm fine, thank you. B. It's cold, isn't it? C. Well, it's a difficult issue. The best response to the question, How are you today? is choice A. I'm fine, thank you. Therefore, you should choose answer A. Now let us begin part two with question number 11. Number 11. Didn't you pick Kristen up at the airport? A. Yes, she drove herself. B. No, she took the shuttle. C. No, I didn't have a good time. Number 12. When do you want to take your vacation? A. Last July. B. In June. C. I'm going to the Bahamas. Number 13. How long was your flight? A. I arrived last year. B. Long, about 12 hours. C. I haven't been here long. Number 14. Where's the produce section? A. Refer to the back of the book. B. It's on the table. C. Go straight down the middle aisle to the back. Number 15. How did your interview go? A. First I went to the bank and I had trouble finding a parking space. B. OK, but I'm not sure it's the right job for me. C. There wasn't a review in today's paper. Number 16. Do you have any openings in your accounting department? A. Yes, here's an application form. B. I'm sorry. The accounting department is closed for the day. C. Accountants must be very good with numbers. Number 17. Who called while I was out? A. Walter, he wants you to call him back. B. I went out for dinner with Walter. C. Telephone answering machines are very useful. Number 18. This office is noisy, isn't it? A. I couldn't hear his speech. B. Yes, children can be very noisy. C. It's because it's on the main road. Number 19. It's always hot in here. Why don't we use the air conditioner? A. Sure, turn it on. B. Because I never stay out late. C. Because I'm having a good time. Number 20. Why didn't you read the instructions first? A. I did, but I didn't understand them. B. Yes, he's a good instructor. C. First, you remove the back panel. Number 21. According to our contract, 
We're allowed emergency leave, aren't we? A. Only five days, and it must be for a family member. B. You are allowed to leave when the meeting ends. C. We had to go to the emergency room last night. Number 22. What should we do about the remaining merchandise? A. I think we should buy a new car. B. Return it to the manufacturer. C. She went into merchandising after graduation. Number 23. When has the conference been changed to? A. Fine, just send out a memo. B. The last weekend in March, is that okay? C. I thought the conference changes were very successful. Number 24. Which building is the accounting department located in? A. Yes, there's an accounting department. B. It's the white building on the right. C. I'm not very good with numbers. Number 25. Who should I address this letter to? A. I'd send it by express mail. B. To Edgar Winters. C. I don't know his address. Number 26. Well, Ms. Watson has accepted my proposal. A. Of course, your proposal was excellent. B. There is nothing acceptable about Ms. Watson. C. I don't know, but I'm optimistic. Number 27. What's the exchange rate today? A. You can exchange it if you have a receipt. B. The same as yesterday. C. Most people resist change. Number 28. I'll get this report to you on either Friday afternoon or Monday morning. A. I was hoping I could look at it over the weekend. B. It's going to be a busy week. C. When will you finish? Number 29. How do the employees feel about the new contract? A. She felt okay until about an hour ago. B. They aren't happy with it. C. Contract negotiations are expected to continue through the night. Number 30. Can you hold this door for me? A. I'll be right there. B. We can hold anything for 48 hours. C. Please don't put me on hold. Number 31. Who is the last person using the computer? A. Why is there a problem? B. I never learned to use a computer. C. I'm taking a computer programming class now. Number 32. Can she type well? A. Yes, she's a real professional. B. No, I've never seen her before. C. It will take about two hours to type it. Number 33. Hasn't the new equipment arrived yet? A. He's arriving this afternoon. B. It's supposed to be delivered within the hour. C. I have all the latest equipment. Number 34. When do you think they'll announce the promotions? A. I hope I get promoted this time. B. They'll tell us at the weekly meeting on Wednesday. C. There will be an announcement. Number 35. Where are they sending you on business this time? A. Oh, I hardly ever go there. B. Morocco and Egypt. C. I'll send you a postcard. Number 
How much is the electric lawnmower in the window? A. It cuts grass of all lengths at high speed. B. Do you mean the red power mower, sir? C. It's a great machine. Number 37. What time is Sir Michael arriving for the opening ceremony? A. Oh no, I forgot the keys. B. I'll open the door in just a moment. C. He'll arrive at 10 and we'll get started at 10.30. Number 38. I'm trying to decide whether Allison or Brian is more reliable. A. I've never known Allison to miss a deadline or forget to do something. B. You can always rely on someone to help out. C. Why don't you relay the message to them? Number 39. How are we going to handle this problem without upsetting everyone? A. Turn the handle to the right. B. I have no idea. This is such a mess. C. It wasn't my fault. Number 40. When can I talk to you about the budget? A. I'm so bad with finances. B. Drop by my office this afternoon. C. I'm in a meeting, so I can't talk. Part 3. Directions. In this section of the test, you will hear a number of conversations between two people. You will be asked to answer three questions about what is said in each conversation. You must select the best response to each question and mark the letter A, B, C, or D on your answer sheet. Each conversation will be spoken only one time and will not be printed in your test book. Questions 4 through 43 refer to the following conversation. You know, the lobby isn't very well lit. I think our clients feel uncomfortable in it. It's not an inviting place at all. I suppose we could have some lights installed. It might look nice if we had a chandelier in the center. Yes, or I was thinking of just adding some table lamps, something small and unobtrusive. Number 41. According to the woman, what is wrong with the lobby? Number 42. What does the man suggest? Number 43. What is the woman's suggestion? Questions 44 through 46 refer to the following conversation. I know he said that he'd be here, but I think we should start the meeting without Peter. He's always late. But we'll just have to repeat everything after he gets here. That's just going to annoy everyone. No. He can read the minutes tomorrow. It's about time he developed some time management skills. Well, I guess so, but I'm not sure he'll get the message. Number 44. What does the woman imply? Number 45. What is the man's objection? Number 46. What does the woman want Peter to develop? Questions 47 through 49 refer to the following conversation. Will you look over this report for me? I don't know why, but it just doesn't seem right. Sure. What kind of feedback do you want? I'd like you to read it for clarity and check my punctuation. I don't think I have gotten the message across clearly. OK, but you know you're always too hard on yourself. You're a very good writer. Number 47. What is the man going to do? Number 48. What is the woman concerned about?
Number 49. What is the man's opinion of the woman's writing skills? Questions 50 through 52 refer to the following conversation. You don't look good. What's wrong? Are you sick? Yes, I think I have the flu. I felt terrible all night and didn't sleep well. What are you doing coming into work then? It's not as though there's a lot to do at the moment. And besides, I don't want everyone else in the office getting sick too. Number 50. What is wrong with the man? Number 51. What does the woman imply? Number 52. Which of the following best describes the situation in the man and woman's office? Go on to the next page. Questions 53 through 55 refer to the following conversation. Excuse me, are these your keys? Yes, they are. Where did you find them? I've been looking for them everywhere. In the parking lot. I'm parked next to you, and I saw them when I got out of my car. Gosh, I'm lucky that no one tried to take my car. It's a good thing I work with such honest people. Number 53. What happened? Number 54. What is the relationship between the man and the woman? Number 55. Why does the man consider himself lucky? Questions 56 through 58 refer to the following conversation. Is what I've heard true? Is Cheryl really leaving next week? Where's she going? Yes, she starts at Beckwith and McDougall the first of the month. She's going to be a conference and events planner. Good for her. I hope she likes it over there. She needs a new challenge. Yes, I think she'll do really well there. Number 56. How does the man feel about the change Cheryl is making? Number 57. What is Cheryl going to do? Number 58. Assuming it is now April, when will Cheryl start at Beckwith and McDougall? Questions 59 through 61 refer to the following conversation. Excuse me, is this sweater on sale? I can't find the price. No, I'm afraid it's not. Only the items with a red or yellow tag are on sale. You can find most of them hanging on the racks at the back of the store. Oh, I see. Thank you. The things I like are never on sale. The same thing always happens to me, too. Number 59. What is the woman doing? Number 60. How does the woman probably feel? Number 61. How does the man respond? Questions 62 through 64 refer to the following conversation I've just come out of a very interesting meeting. The manager is giving me a raise starting next month. Hey, that's fantastic. It's about time they gave you some recognition. Let's celebrate. I'd love to, but he wants me to get started on a new project right away. I have to go back to his office again. Sounds like you'll be earning that raise. Number 62. What has just happened to the woman? Number 63. What does the man imply?
Number 64. Where does the woman have to go now? Questions 65 through 67 refer to the following conversation. There's a lot of talk about overstaffing and possible layoffs. I'm wondering if I should update my resume and start applying to some other companies. I've heard the rumors too. Are you worried? Well, I have no seniority. If they let people go, I think I'd be pretty near the top of the list. Now you've got me really worried. I started working here after you. Number 65. Why is the man worried? Number 66. What makes the man feel insecure? Number 67. How does the woman feel at the end of the conversation? Questions 68 through 70 refer to the following conversation. There you are. I want to complain to you about something. Why? What's wrong? You look really upset. You've been telling everyone that I'm leaving next month. Well, you are leaving. And besides, I'm looking for people who are interested in taking over your position. I will need to replace you. Number 68. Why was the man looking for the woman? Number 69. What has the woman been telling other people? Number 70. Why does the woman think she has done nothing wrong? Go on to the next page. Part 4 Directions In this section of the test, you will hear a number of short talks given by a single speaker. Again, you must answer three questions about what is said in each talk. Choose the most appropriate response to each question and mark the letter A, B, C, or D on your answer sheet. Each talk will be spoken only one time and will not be printed in your test book. Questions 71 through 73 refer to the following announcement. The final item on our agenda is recycling. We need to take responsibility for our environment. In this office, we recycle copy paper, plastic, and glass, and newspapers. There are separate containers for glass, plastic, and newspapers beneath the back windows. All new staff members, please take note of the boxes on the shelves near the copy machines. There is one box for each of the three sizes of paper we use. Put all recyclable paper in the appropriate boxes. Recyclable paper is paper that has been printed on one side only. Put them face down in the boxes. Do not put two sided copies in the boxes, they cannot be reused. Do not mix up the sizes. Any questions? No? Then that's all for today. Enjoy your lunch. Number 71. Where is this announcement taking place? Number 72. Where is the container for newspapers? Number 73. What time of day is this announcement probably being made? Question 74 through 76 refer to the following talk. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to introduce you to our two newest staff members. Marcia Goldsmith is an endocrinologist of some renown. She has written the most recent definitive textbook on clinical management of diabetes patients. She spent 10 years at Boston University Hospital and also lectured widely. 
In fact, she has a reputation as a first-class speaker, so we are looking forward to her noon conferences. David Ireland has been head of the Infectious Disease Department at the University of California at San Francisco Medical Center for the past six years. He was co-chairman of the World Health Organization prior to that for two years. He began his career with three years of research and clinical work in West Africa. He is well versed in both the ordinary realm of infectious diseases and the more exotic tropical diseases. Everyone, please join me in welcoming David Ireland and Marcia Goldsmith. Number seventy-four. Who are being introduced? Number seventy-five. What is remarkable about Marcia Goldsmith? Number seventy-six. What did David Ireland do for three years? Question seventy-seven through seventy-nine refer to the following announcement. Don't miss the Taos Film Festival, sponsored by Taos Telecommunications, Taos Motors, and Taos Electronics. It's bigger than ever this year. You can choose from among sixty different programs over the five-day run of the festival. Films will be screened at the Taos Convention Center and at each of the four Storyteller Theaters in the 280-seat Taos Community Auditorium, newly refurbished with 35-millimeter projectors. Tickets are six dollars for individual screenings. A fifty-dollar punch card is good for admission to ten regularly priced events. For a full lineup of events, come to the Film Festival box office at the Horse Gallery in downtown Taos, or call one five zero five nine seven seven four seven one nine. You can also check out the Taos Film Festival website at www.taos.film.com. Number seventy-seven. Which one of these is not a sponsor of the festival? Number seventy-eight. What is new about the Storyteller Theaters? Number seventy-nine. How much does it cost to see one movie? Questions eighty through eighty-two refer to the following announcement. Good morning. You're listening to Radio Joy FM. This is Bridget Reynolds with the hourly weather report. After a week of rain, we're going to have some respite. We should have partly sunny skies over the big city today. It will be breezy and mild, with temperatures in the low seventies. Along the coast, however, those breezes are going to turn heavy with gusts of up to thirty-five miles per hour. Tomorrow should be mostly sunny, with plenty of wind to keep our skies fresh and clear. We can expect three days of this, so hold on to your hats. For those of you planning to take part in the Joy FM charity marathon tomorrow, this means it's going to be a tough run, especially along the beachfront promenade. Number eighty. How long had it rained? Number eighty-one. What advice is given, and why? Number eighty-two. What will the weather be like along the coast today? Questions eighty-three through eighty-five refer to the following announcement. Attention, please. This is an announcement for passengers on International Airlines Flight zero seven three. We have important information for passengers with tickets for this flight. We regret to inform you that International Airlines Flight zero seven three to Hong Kong is overbooked. We don't want to have to bump passengers, so we are asking for volunteers to go on a later flight. Although this is small compensation for the inconvenience. We will reward each volunteer with a class upgrade, or a free one-way flight coupon 
which may be used on any future international airlines flight within the Pacific Rim area. Anyone who wishes to volunteer, please come to gate D25 by 2:30. Thank you. We apologize sincerely for the inconvenience and thank you for your cooperation. Number 83. What is the problem? Number 84. What does the airline not want to do? Number 85. What does the airline offer? Questions 86 through 88 refer to the following message. Thank you for calling the main branch of the public library. The library is currently closed. During library opening hours, you will be able to speak directly to one of the librarians. For regular library opening hours, press 1. For information about the audiovisual section, press 2. For general loans information, press 3. For information about the reference section, including a list of all periodicals stocked in the reference room, press 4. For information about the Children's Library and coming library events for children, press 5. For information regarding talking books for the hard of hearing, press 6. This message will automatically repeat. Remember, the library also has a home page where you can find all of the above information on our user friendly website. The address is www.city.library.org. Number 86. When is it possible to speak to a librarian? Number 87. Who should press 6? Number 88. If you want to get information about checking out a video, which number do you select? Questions 89 through 91 refer to the following advertisement. It's almost that time of year where we all start coughing and sneezing. Get a head start on the cold season and stop a cold before it stops you. New improved Victory Vitamin C compound with rosehip is just what you need to help build up your immunity before the cold season hits. Medical tests have proven that taking 600 milligrams of Victory Vitamin C compound once a day for three weeks before the expected start of the cold season can increase your resistance by up to 120%. Taking 300 milligrams daily throughout the rest of the cold season is enough to ward off those annoying sore throats and runny noses. Victory Vitamin C compound available at your local drugstore. Number 89. What is being advertised? Number 90. For how long should you take this product before the cold season? Number 91. How much of this product should you take? Questions 92 through 94 refer to the following speech. I'm afraid that it is not good news that has prompted me to call you all here today. As you know, this has been a difficult year for Bryson's, and profits have been at a record low for the last three quarters in a row. We were hoping that this fourth quarter would bring us out of the slump, but this has not been the case. Therefore, I have no choice but to tell you the following. Staff cuts have to be made, starting with those of you who have been here for the shortest time. We are sorry we are not able to offer the continued opportunity to develop your careers at Bryson's. Lydia will now read a list of the first group of names and explain what happens next. Number 92. What is the purpose of this announcement? Number 93. For how long has the company been having trouble?
Number 94. Who will be asked to leave first? Go on to the next page. Questions 95 through 97 refer to the following message. Hello, Ted. This is Kevin again. Looks like you are still out of the office. I've already called you half a dozen times this morning, but either you're ignoring all my messages or you haven't checked them yet. We really need to discuss the Mitchell account before Michelle Mitchell comes in on Friday. She's been handling things since her husband's death and she's much more thorough than he was. We need to make sure everything is in its place and that all the numbers add up properly. She won't accept any mistakes and, to be honest, we've been getting a bit complacent. We can't afford to lose her business, so give me a call as soon as you can and we can run through the files together. Number 95. How many times has Kevin called Ted? Number 96. What does Kevin imply about the Mitchell account? Number 97. What should Ted do after hearing this message? Questions 98 through 100 refer to the following talk. I'd like to thank all of you for coming here today to listen to a few excerpts from my latest book. In fact, this is a book which was almost not published. I didn't think that there was room in the market for another book on fund management. But Dr. Higgins of the Federation of Investment persuaded me that enough of my ideas were original that it would be a shame not to put them in print. I have trusted his opinion on many an occasion, and so here I am today with Funds for the Future. It is aimed at the novice and the veteran alike, and gives tips on how to avoid some of the common mistakes investors and their advisors make. Number 98. What is the purpose of this talk? Number 99. Why did the speaker almost not publish her work? Number 100. Who would be interested in her work? This is the end of the listening test. Turn to part 5 in. Turn to part 5 in. Turn to